Is DeMontis Sabonis going to be involved with Sacramento Kings offseason decision making alongside the front office this summer? A throwaway line in Sabonis's conversation with Sam Amick of The Athletic is what stood out to me. We'll talk about that conversation, plus the Kings lost to the Utah Jazz, but that's okay. It's all fine and dandy here on the Locked on Kings podcast. <laughs> You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. If you're looking for in-depth analysis, game-by-game -game breakdowns, highlights, interviews with local and national experts, full coverage of your Sacramento Kings from January through December, this is the place for you, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I've been covering the Sacramento Kings now for eight seasons, currently working with ABC 10 News here in the California capital. And uh, I apologize for no podcast over the last couple of days. It's rare that I have back-to-back -back days of no podcast pods uh wasn't too much going on other than this athletic article that dropped Sam Amick's conversation with DeMontis Sabonis. It happened right after the game against the Knicks in Sacramento when Sabonis was actually ejected. Uh, and there's a lot of good quotes, a lot of good uh, things from this uh, this uh, interview and this uh, article that we're going to talk about. But the main bit that we're going to focus on, I'll get to, is actually kind of a throwaway line in this entire conversation. And, and Sam didn't ask any kind of follow-up on it. Maybe it doesn't mean as much as I'm going to put into it, but it's going to be the main thing that I discussed and the main thing that I personally pulled away uh, from this article. But we're going to dive into that. Yes, of course, the Kings did play uh, and lose tonight to the Utah Jazz. Still a pretty entertaining game. De'Aaron Fox had a fantastic game. We'll get to that in the next segment discussing that. Uh, plus, coming up on tomorrow's Locked on Kings podcast, I'm doing something sort of new here that I'm very excited about, uh, and I'll tell you about that at the end of the show. But let's dive into this conversation between uh, the athletic Sam Amick, who joined me a couple of months ago right before the, the trade deadline here on Locked on Kings. Uh, he is very well plugged in with the Sacramento Kings, as you know, started here in Sacramento, working for the Sacramento Bee before uh, taking his uh, his talents to the national scene. So he's always very well connected with the Kings and always uh, gets these kind of interviews, gets these kind of conversations. Uh, and uh, there's not a lot in this article that is really going to surprise anybody. There's not a lot from this article that was, could be considered breaking news necessarily. It's more of a kind of like get to know Sabonis and where his mind is at uh, coming to Sacramento, being traded from the Indiana Pacers. Uh, and I highly encourage you to go and read this article. And we're only going to point out really three things from this article. There's a lot more than just the three things that we're going to point out. Uh, so I encourage you to go and uh, get a subscription to The Athletic just for uh, Sam Amick's content uh, that he provides. He he does a lot of King stuff, not just this, uh, every single year. And if there's national Kings use, uh, news, usually Sam is, is probably the first or one of the first uh, to get his hands on it. But three things that I'm pulling from this article, basically it's a transcript of an interview between Sam uh, and Sabonis. So it has Amix questions followed by Sabonis's answers. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is um, the winning mentality that uh, Sabonis is trying to instill here and bring here uh, to Sacramento. And he said this, I had a lot of conversations with everyone here already. I feel like we're all on the same page. Everyone's motivated. We want to start instilling a winning mentality, doing winning things that happen in practice, on the court, off the court, on the road, all these little things. We want to start changing things and trying to get a winning season and be successful. Not the first time that we've heard that term winning mentality over the, not just the last 15, 16 seasons, really over the last couple of seasons, we've heard that that term brought up a number of times. And how many times recently here on Locked on Kings have I talked about the losing culture here in Sacramento, how that culture needs to change. And I'm at the point where I've seen it stick around so long and infect, the, that's the word that I used, infect so many players uh, that it almost feels like the Kings have to get lucky and stumble into fixing it. At least that's where I'm personally at. But of course, that's from the mentality of someone who's been around this organization through this entire playoff drought. DeMontis Sabonis is coming in here, 25 years old, now paired with a, a star point guard in De'Aaron Fox. 
believing that the Kings can actually get something done and he can be a part of that. So I'm happy to hear that Sabonis is wanting to instill a winning mentality. I'm glad that he brought up that it happens in practice. It happens off the floor. It happens on the road. This team needs it across the board. It's not just, I mean, they might have a good locker room with good leadership, a bunch of guys that get along, but there's no winning mentality in that locker room. There's no winning mentality uh, in the practice facility. We thought that there was when we saw the videos at the beginning of the season, right? Of De'Aaron Fox and Davion Mitchell playing aggressive one-on-one basketball against each other. No, no idea where the hell that went because that didn't last too long come the uh, the actual regular season. But it's seeing that consistently on all sides of this team and all aspects of this team, wherever they are during a season, even during an off season, Sabonis wants to be a part of that. And as excited as I am for him to say that and want to do that, good luck. <laughs> good luck, Sabonis. That's one of the best things that I have to say at this point. It's like there have been a lot of players that have come in and recognized that instilling a winning mentality is what this team desperately needs and changing the culture is what this team desperately needs. And there's been a lot of players who have come in and have failed. Now, to be fair, with the exception of the trade for Chris Weber almost two decades ago, uh, the or actually over two decades ago now, the Kings have never really traded for a player of Sabonis's caliber. So maybe someone who has all-star experience, even though he wasn't the greatest of all-stars, it's it's important to note, like he's a two-time all-star and we're not taking that away from him, but he was never on the higher upper echelon of Eastern Conference all-stars. Still a damn good player. Still one of the best players that the Kings have ever trade for. Uh, so maybe that will help, bringing in that quality of a player who can come in and theoretically fit right into what the Sacramento Kings are trying to do, become an important piece for this team and the core of this team going forward with a partner that theoretically makes a lot of sense in De'Aaron Fox. Maybe that partnership is what can lead to instilling a winning mentality, but I'm also still at the point where uh, I'll, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, another thing Sabonis talks about, his long-term fit in Sacramento. This is actually at the very end of the article, the last question that Sam asks and this is what Simona says. He said, I'm excited about the whole journey. It sucks that we don't, or that we have that playoff drought, but the fact that we can be a part of something that can turn it around, you know, that's the goal. Come in and change the perspective of this organization and what people think. We're excited that we can be part of that and build it, you know? So I want to stay as long as I can. Everything has to go well, but I'm happy here. It's awesome. The fans are great. I'm excited to see us do good. You can tell by the inflection of my voice in that quote that there's a that the most important line in here is everything has to go well, but I'm happy here. Simonis from day one, he arrived in Sacramento. Uh, has expressed how happy he is here. And I'm not, I don't think that's just lip service. I think he's excited to be here. We know uh, the family ties that his wife has uh, to California. I genuinely believe that he likes it here in Sacramento and he could see this as a long-term home. But I appreciate, I truly appreciate, even if some fans saw this and maybe were a little nervous by this, and it's okay to be nervous about it, but I appreciate Sabonis being very honest and saying everything has to go well. If over these next two years, things are an absolute disaster, would anybody blame DeMontis Sabonis for not wanting to play here, for wanting to move on? If Sabonis just becomes another cog in the wheel of Sacramento Kings ineptitude, like so many players before him have easily slotted into, why would you want to stay in that, especially when after two years at 27 years old, theoretically Sabonis will be right smack dab in the middle of the prime of his career and could probably get a healthy contract on maybe a contending team. So... I don't blame Sabonis with that mindset at all. In fact, I would be more concerned or I would be a lot more skeptical if he had said, I absolutely want to be here. This is where I see myself for the remainder of the season. I'm not even worried about re-signing two years from now. Like I, I don't, I believe he's not concerned about re-signing at this point in time. He has two years left on his contract. He's doing just fine. He doesn't have to worry about that quite yet. But, I, I do appreciate the fact that he's just not blindly committing to the Kings and there's no way, shape or form, no way in hell that he should ever blindly commit to the Kings and any Kings fan who is wanting him to do that. I understand kinda, but again, I think it would be more disingenuous. I would be more skeptical goal, maybe even a little more concerned if he were to say that, because it would sound like he's almost trying to convince himself versus this way. He's very honest. He's very open. Look, things have to go well. Things have to this. We have to turn this organization around, or it's not going to work out here long term. Now, I'm putting words in his mouth there, but that's kind of how I interpret what he's saying. But he's also not saying that, at least how I read these words. I, I haven't seen him or heard how he says this, but how I read these words, I don't think he's saying that with like with the uh, 
the expectation, the pessimistic expectation that that's going to happen. I do believe Sabonis has an optimistic expectation that he is going to be able to turn things around here in Sacramento and that this is going to be his long-term home. I am, I believe him when he says he doesn't really want to bounce around anymore. But those two things, as important as they are, are not the main things that I pulled from this article. In fact, the main thing that I pulled from this article is literally a throwaway line in an answer to a question about him being thrown out uh, after the or during the the New York Knicks game, that was the third straight game. Remember that the Kings blew a big lead. This time they blew a twenty point lead after back to back nineteen point blown leads on the road. The Kings return home, built up a big lead in the first half, and got their asses kicked by Julius Randle. And then Sabonis was uh, was ejected, and then also made a contact with the official, which is why he was suspended uh, for the, uh, the the Denver Nuggets game uh, right after that. But there's a throwaway line in here, and I'm not going to read it with any kind of inflection. I just want to, I'm, I'm wondering if you're going to catch on it. And then I'll, I'll, of course, point it out. He says, I mean, that's why I got frustrated. They, the Kings, brought me here, and we want to change things. You know, my goal is to make the play in tournament game. Like, that would be amazing just to be in that kind of game or just to play the right way, build little building stones to next season. That's why I got really upset because, again, we blew our second game up by 20. Technically, no, it was your first game up by 20. Last couple of games were up by 19. And these are games that we need to make it into the play-in. I want for this organization and for this city to make, he basically saying he wants to make the plan for the organization in the city. It'll be a lot of fun. It's just little by little. I think we're doing great things and going in the right direction. We're going to have a big summer. We've been talking about it and we'll ha uh, have a good training camp and get all the people together, you know, end of quote. Did you catch the throwaway line there? It's at the end. He says, we're going to have a big summer. We've been talking about it. And then we'll have a good training camp and get all the people together. We're going to have a big summer. We've been talking about it. Now, that can mean a million things. That can mean Sabonis and the players in the locker room who he believes are going to stick around, the players that they know are part of the core going forward. I'm talking about guys like De'Aaron Fox, uh, probably Harrison Barnes, Davion Mitchell, Dante DiVincenzo. He's talking to those guys about how excited they are to, to spend a full season together next season. He could mean that. It's very probable that he means that. But also earlier in the article, he talks about the amount of conversations that he's had with assistant general manager Wes Wilcox, also uh, current general manager Monty McNair. Is there a chance that DeMontis Sabonis is already having discussions with the Kings front office about what they want this team to do and accomplish this offseason. I think that's very likely as well. Look, if you want to retain a talent like Sabonis, if you know that in a couple of years his contract's going to come up and you traded away a player like Tyrese Halliburton in order to get him, you don't want to lose him after two years. So you want to appease him in whatever way you can. By The best way to do that is, of course, by winning. But it is not uncommon by any means, for teams to involve their best players in decision-making. Now, do they have the final say? No, but you best believe that big names on big teams. Now, no, I'm not talking like LeBron James and the Lakers because LeBron does have the final say with whatever the Lakers do. But let's use a let's use like Giannis Antetokounmpo with the Milwaukee Bucks, for example. We have no reason to believe that Giannis is calling shots how similar to how LeBron is calling shots in L.A. But you best believe Giannis is involved in decision-making or at least shares his opinion on players that he likes and doesn't like or players that he wants to play with. In fact, I believe that De'Aaron Fox, the reason, one of the major reasons why the Kings acquired DeMontis Sabonis was because De'Aaron Fox was asking for that type of player. Maybe he was asking for Sabonis specifically. Sure looked like it when Sabonis first arrived here, but I'm not sure. Is DeMontis Sabonis saying that already there are conversations happening between him, maybe De'Aaron Fox, and the Kings front office, and that those conversations will continue over the course of this offseason. See, that's where I'm like, ooh, tell me more. I want to know more. Like, what kind of conversations? And I know that wasn't necessarily the point of the uh, question, the point of the uh, article for Sam, but I wish I could be a, a fly on the wall or on Sam's shoulder whispering in his ear telling him to ask a follow-up on that specifically. Not that Sabonis would have probably said anything because those things are kept behind closed doors, but I wonder what conversations are going on. 
Is Sabonis meeting with the front office saying, hey, we really need, I need a four to play with that stretches the floor. Or we need more defense, obviously. Or we need a better two that, uh, to, that spreads the floor. Or we need to go and get this guy in the draft if we get this pick. I really like this guy. I want to know what conversations are happening. Plus, what conversations are going to potentially be happening around the next head coach of the Sacramento Kings. Because maybe Sabonis or Fox have input on to coaches that they respect that are available, which coaches are on the market, the type of playing style that they want to play, how that coach can complement that. Maybe they like or dislike certain candidates. I'm sure Sabonis and Fox are going to be involved in conversations this offseason to some capacity. So that was the line that jumped out to me. What are those conversations, DeMontis Sabonis? Can I pick your brain for five minutes? Can you come here on Locked On Kings and, and, and spill the beans, and then we can modify everybody else's memory except for Locked On Kings listeners and nobody else will know except for us what's really going on. That's my that's my wish upon a star at this point in time. I want to know what conversations are happening between the front office and Sabonis slash Fox about next season. Because regardless of what happens for the remainder of the season, making the plan or missing the plan, this offseason is going to be massive. I know I feel like I say that every single summer. Next season, like there's there's no underselling how important next season is, how essential it is for the Kings to be minimum an eighth seed next season. Minimum. Yeah, that's going to take a big jump. I don't care. A full season of De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis together, expecting improvements on top of that after trading away a player like Tyrese Halliburton, damn right, you better be minimum eighth seed. I'm excited. We'll have to wait and see, but go and check out that full article, uh, that conversation between Sam uh, and Sabonis, other great stuff in there uh, that I think you'll be really interested in, including the process of like where Sabonis is living right now in Sacramento. And, and he talks a lot about the fans and how Sacramento has welcomed him and relationships that he's already building here. Great stuff in there. Go and check out that article. Um, and uh, Sam always does a fantastic job, but the Kings played a basketball game tonight in case you didn't know. If you didn't watch it, I don't necessarily blame you, although you did miss a good performance again out of De'Aaron Fox. We'll talk about that when we come back. I'm really excited, though, because right now, for the first time ever here on Locked on Kings, I'm going to tell you about a new sponsor called Athletic, uh, Athletic Greens. Excuse me. Athletic Greens, uh, a little less than a month ago, they sent us, uh, I think all the Locked on uh, podcast hosts got sent a like a, a starter pack, a care package of all this athletic green stuff. And I've been looking for something like this for such a long time. Now, to be clear, it's very different from Built Bars, and I have Built Bars religiously every single day. But Athletic Greens is like a, a supplement that just does so much for you. And the big thing with me for Athletic Greens, I use it literally every day, and I mainly use Athletic Greens because of the boost that it provides, natural, healthy energy that it provides me. I'm up late watching Kings games, hosting Locked On Kings podcast. And for those of you who don't know, I work for ABC 10 News and I'm a, 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 I am work on the morning show, our morning broadcast. So I'm up at two o'clock in the morning and I'm my workday starts at 3 a.m. I work from 3 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So energy is extremely important for me. Of course, I drink coffee. I try to avoid energy drinks as much as possible. Athletic Greens has given me a healthy, natural energy that I'm using every single day. And I am already done with my care package and ordering my next one. In fact, I had worked today without Athletic Greens for the first time. I felt the effect. It is so good for you. It is so delicious. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, uh, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. It supports better sleep quality. This is big. And recovery uh, recovery supports mental clarity and alertness. It's one thing, or one of the best things really about Athletic Greens. They use the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product adoration and third-party testing. To make it easy, Ath Green, uh, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is vi visit athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NBA network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. 
Locked on Kings is also brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. It's that time of the year again. College basketball's tournament finally upon us. It's March, ladies and gentlemen. And from all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. Look, if you pay attention to the tournament just for scouting potential draft picks uh, that the Kings can uh, can end up keeping an eye on, and maybe we'll end up bringing to Sacramento this summer. Hey, use the time and also maybe make a little bit of money. Maybe you're filling out a bracket. There's different challenges and things like that on Bet Online. They remain the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It's not just basketball, of course. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting, wagering information needs, including live betting, and even your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at Bet Online, where the game starts. The Kings lost to the Utah Jazz. It's part of their, what I'm calling their hell stretch, five straight games of yikes. And the Kings taking on a shorthanded Utah Jazz team. The Kings themselves also uh, very shorthanded. We just talked a lot about Demonte Sabonis. He did not play in this game for personal reasons. Now, I haven't gotten this 100% confirmed, but I'm pretty confident in saying the reason why Sabonis was not with the team, it's not a tanking decision, tanking crowd. It wasn't the Kings intentionally shutting him down. From what I understand, DeMontis Sabonis, uh, his son was born two to three days ago. So the fact that his family went through that big of a move and basically had to move their life all the way from Indiana to Sacramento while Sabonis' wife uh, was that pregnant. I mean, I, I, my wife and I dealt with a pregnancy seven months ago, uh, and I know how complicated and, and, and exhausting that is. So more power to, I can't even imagine being a new father, uh, like I am right now and having the travel schedule and the expectations that are on NBA players and professional athletes. Harrison Barnes, child, his second child was actually born the same exact day as mine, August 25th. And he's been dealing with that all season long. So Sabonis missed this game, I believe because of the birth of his, uh, his son, congratulations to the Sabonis family. So happy for them. Uh, and I hope that everything, uh, is, uh, is okay. That everything is, is healthy. The baby is safe. Uh, and I wish them the absolute, absolute best. That being said, Kings could have used the bonus tonight and the Kings need the bonus that they want any chance during this five game hell stretch. Uh, the good news is even though the Kings lost 134 to 125, not an ounce of defense was played by either team. A lot of that has to do with the fact that the, uh, jazz were missing two important starters, including defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, who didn't play in this game. Uh, Mike Conley also didn't play. He was resting. Gobert was actually out with, I think it was like a foot injury or something like that. I I didn't pay that much attention to be honest with you. And De'Aaron Fox absolutely had a, a, a monster game again, just another, reminder game from De'Aaron that he is a star 41 points on 15 of 32 shooting. Now there's a reason why De'Aaron Fox took 32 shots. It's because nobody else on the freaking team really was, was helping him out at all. Um, 20 of those 41 points came in the first quarter, which is a career high for Fox uh, scoring in a quarter. He was absolutely on fire right out of the gate. He played almost 42 minutes, 41 minutes, 19 seconds in total in this game. Played a lot of minutes ultimately for the Kings to lose the game, unfortunately. Just needed more help. And some people are going to say, hey, De'Aaron Fox had that good of a game against the Utah Jazz because Rudy Gobert didn't play. And while I understand to some extent, like Rudy Gobert being in the middle certainly changes a lot of things for a player like De'Aaron Fox. One, Fox has had success against the Jazz and Gobert uh, in the past and had maybe not 40-point games, but had offensive explosion games in Utah before. That's number one. Number two is a lot of the damage that De'Aaron Fox did in this game was from beyond the three-point line and in mid-range. Like, Fox was lights out shooting to start this game, slow down a little bit, but ended up shooting five of 11 from three point range. And hell, if Fox is shooting double digits and threes, I am totally okay with that. Even if he gets down to his normal percentage where he's only hitting two or three, I will take Fox taking a lot of threes at this point in time, as long as they're not forced crappy shots. And at no point really uh, did, well, maybe a few, but none that really stood out where Fox was really forcing, maybe a couple heat check moments, but nothing absolutely crazy. Uh, that's for sure. I love the game that Fox put together. I also love the fact that Fox finished with 11 assists and it's back-to-back uh, 10 plus assist games for De'Aaron. I think this is his fifth double, double of the season. Uh, he's had three or four 10 plus assist games in the last like seven or eight games, something like that. Fox is finding out how to be effective as a scorer and also be just as effective as a distributor. That being said, no DeMontis a bonus means that there's a significant lack of scoring that somebody has to pick up. And while you did get 18 from Harrison Barnes, he only took 12 shots. At least it's double digits. Still needs to be more when Sabonis isn't playing. We talked about that recently. 
Trey Lyles with actually another solid game as a starter, only played uh, 24 minutes, five of nine from the field, turned in 13 points, only six points from Damian Jones, uh, and only three points from Justin Holiday, who only played nine and a half minutes in this game because he ended up leading the game or leaving with a non- COVID related illness. So I hope that he is okay. We got to see Dante DiVincenzo start in the second half, which I was excited about. And he ultimately did nothing defensively. He didn't have a great game guarding, uh, guarding Donovan Mitchell. Uh, and offensively, he had some yikes moments, including an absolute blown layup. He finishes with just three points. You did get uh, 12 points out of Davion Mitchell. Uh, and you are rather 12 points out of Chimezu Metu, 14 points out of Davion Mitchell off the bench, but overall offensively, even if the, with the Kings scoring 125 points, De'Aaron Fox just needs more help. And then defensively, the Kings couldn't stop anything. They couldn't stop an, uh, like a, a immobile object at this point in time, especially, uh, Jordan Clarkson, who was coming into this game in a little bit of a three point shooting slump. You best believe he had this game circled on his calendar as this is a good uh, get right opportunity for me. He had a career high, 45 points, seven of 13 from three point range. And someone asked me on Twitter, like, why does it? Why do guys like Clarkson always seem to have these big games against the Kings? And I know I've talked about this before. I'm telling you, players recognize, especially perimeter players, they know that against the Sacramento Kings, they're going to get their opportunity. And that breeds confidence. And confidence is so important in shooting. So important. So when a player comes into a game knowing that they've been struggling and they see that they're going up against a Kings defense who's notoriously crappy to begin with, but also is terrible at guarding the perimeter. You know, you're going to get your shot. And Jordan Clarkson was putting everything up with the expectation that it was going in. And he developed a rhythm very, very quickly. And the Kings couldn't stop him all game long. Like he was knocking down everything. The confidence that he brought into this game is a similar confidence that we see on a nightly basis from at least one guy especially perimeter shooting. And that's why it's a lot of these obscure names. Now, Jordan Clarkson, if you're not familiar with him, you need to, because Clarkson's a better player uh, than, than I think people give him credit for, although he's very popular amongst the Utah Jazz. But there are a lot of players around the league, lesser names that that we our joke is like, who's going to get their career high against the Kings tonight, right? There are so many players out there that see playing time against the Sacramento Kings as an opportunity to showcase their skills offensively. And they bring that confidence into the game with them. And that confidence is palpable and it leads to results. Confidence is so important in the NBA. And because the Kings defense is so bad, players know that they're going to get their opportunity. Jordan Clarkson cashed in on that with 45 points. He also got 25 uh, from De uh, Donovan Mitchell, 26 from Boyan Bogdanovich. Hassan Whiteside had a 12-point, 21-rebound double-double filling in for Rudy Gobert. Oh boy. Well, the Kings, uh, unfortunately, uh, I mean, the lowest quarter they, they held the jazz scoring was 29 in the third. Other than that, it was a 37 point first quarter, 34 point second quarter, 34 point fourth quarter. So no defense to be found in this game. I did appreciate the Kings doing a good job taking care of the basketball. Only seven turnovers. The assist to turnover ratio, very good. 27 assists to seven turnovers. Another game where offensively team looked good. Again, Fox could have used more help defensively. Like, no, very little chance the Kings have uh, to win when they're giving up 134 points. And unfortunately, they give up that many points a lot uh, over the course of or have done that a lot over the course of this season. Rashawn Holmes, poor guy, returned to the lineup, came in off the bench, ended up getting ejected in between the third and fourth quarters. No idea what happened. The camera only really caught, I guess, the latter half of it. I'm not sure if he had already been ejected or it was when he picked up his second technical and got ejected. But Holmes was very heated. He was clearly frustrated with, I don't know if it was the officiating. I don't know if it was just it's over. Like, Rashawn has had such a difficult, difficult season. And I feel so bad for him. No consistency. Been in and out of the lineup with injuries, the eye, uh, eye lacerations and things like that. Other little injuries. Missed some time with personal issues recently had, I believe a death in the family. Um, so he's been dealing with that. Like it's been a rough, rough time for Rashawn Holmes. Then he gets ejected in this game because of some clear frustrations. I feel really bad for him because he deserves the contract that he got. I still think he's worth every penny of that contract, even if he hasn't played up to it so far this season. Uh, that all being said, as I've said before, I would be very surprised, very surprised if, uh, if Rashawn Holmes was on the Kings next season. And that's not, I'm not trying to discredit him or saying uh, that the Kings are giving up on him or that he's not useful to the Kings because he does have plenty of value, I believe, and the Kings are probably going to get something nice for him this offseason, or hopefully they're going to be able to. But when DeMontis Sabonis comes in and takes your job, it's tough. 
Like I just I feel for Rashawn because it's uh it's been a tough season for him. Kings dropped to 24 and 45 on the season. And a question that I have for you about this game is this is another game where Fox goes off. Like I said, 41 points in this one, really had no help. Sabonis didn't play, so that's an important aspect to this. But do you look at these big games that Fox has been having recently, most of them in losses? Do you look at this as empty stats? Or do you look at this more as a reminder of what Fox can be? the kind of Fox that we were hoping at the beginning of the season, the Fox that we saw a lot last season, do games like this, this stretch from De'Aaron give you more hope for this upcoming off season or do you more a next season, I should say, or do you more associate that with kind of empty stats? Like he's just, he's putting up good numbers and he's playing well, but the Kings are losing defensively. He and the rest of the team still isn't good. Like if, if, if Fox was truly the star that the Kings are wanting him to be, then he would help lead the team to actual wins in big performances like this. Are you, are you there? Or are you more of encouraged by what you're seeing out of De'Aaron? Because I know there are a lot of people who are pro draft lottery odds who are happy the Kings are losing, but also happy to see De'Aaron getting right and playing better, knowing that if he had the help of Sabonis and uh, and some upgrades this offseason, maybe the Kings would be far more likely to win games like this. Let me know how you're feeling with that. You can reach me on Twitter at MattGeorgeSack. You can email me, MattGeorgeSports at gmail.com. Before we wrap up, I have a cool thing to tell you about that's coming here to Locked on Kings, something new that we are doing. Uh, I'm very excited to tell you about that after I tell you about Rock Auto. If you're looking for auto parts, rockauto.com is the absolute best place to go. There's ever increasing numbers of makes and models and right now it's only it's almost impossible for you to find the auto parts that you need especially from your local auto parts store or dealership look they only carry their brands you face intimidating questioning half the time having no idea what the hell that they're talking about so there's already kind of a, a concern about trust there and you're set on price points a lot of the time the, those prices are inflated there's nothing that you can do about it you're stuck well, rockauto.com removes all of that stress for you. You have access to your phones. You have access to computers. Rockauto.com is easy to get to, easy to browse. They have a variety of parts, a variety of brands, a variety of price points. So you truly are finding the best deal for exactly what you need. You can spend 30, 50, or even 100% less for the same parts rather than going to a chain store or car dealership. There's so many great things for you from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. Go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? So they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. So I've done Locked on Kings roundtables with media members. I've done, I think, three of them here on the Locked on Kings podcast. And I haven't done one this season, haven't done one for quite some time, but I used to do fans only podcasts here on Locked on Kings, where I would invite a, a, a couple of fans and do individual one on one interviews with them and just talk to them about their Kings fandom, get their input on what the Kings are doing, their thoughts on the Kings season moves that they think the Kings should make really just inviting fans, the great listeners of locked on Kings and the great fans of the Kings overall from around the world onto the podcast to just talk Kings basketball with me. And so I wanted to combine those two ideas and do something that's, that's relatively new. So instead of doing fans only where I just invite fans over and it's just three, basically one-on-one -on -one conversations played back to back to back. I'm doing a fans roundtable, So I'm going to have three Sacramento Kings fans join me on the Locked on Kings podcast tomorrow. And we're just going to discuss the current state of the Kings. We're going to talk about the Tyrese Halliburton trade, of course, the confidence in this team uh, for this upcoming uh, offseason and next season, expectations for next season, uh, thoughts on Fox and Sabonis together, uh, we'll find out whether or not they're in the try and win right now for the remainder of the season crowd or, or, or tank for draft lottery odds. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Uh, and I initially put this out on social media at match or sack on Twitter saying that I wanted to do this. And within an hour, uh, I got like 30 or 40 different people saying that they wanted to be a part of it. So I definitely have to do more of these. If you have reached out, hopefully I responded to all of you. Uh, I have put together a list. So those who aren't on this uh, initial Kings fan roundtable, assuming it goes well and that people like it and, and listeners like it, I hopefully will be doing more of these and I have your name on a list. So I will be reaching out to you uh, to hopefully get you on. Uh, if you want to be a part of that and you're not on Twitter, you can email me Matt George sports at gmail.com and ask to be put on that list. I'm looking forward to doing this because I, I love Kings fans. I'm a Kings fan at heart started there. 
uh, and grew into this career. I know there are so many knowledgeable Kings fans out there. I enjoy having private conversations with you all. So now let's make these conversations a little more pro public. Plus, you're going to get Kings fans interacting with each other and a little bit less of me, uh, which is something that uh, I, uh, <laughs> I'm i certainly game for. So I hope you will join me for that tomorrow. Looking forward to that. And then this, uh, this run of Kings hell continues on monday they host the chicago bulls then on wednesday they host the milwaukee bucks then on friday they host the boston celtics and then on sunday they host the phoenix suns <sighs> yikes this uh round table might be the only good thing that we do here on locked on kings this week in terms of happy and positive and enjoyable but i'm looking forward to this stretch i'm looking forward to going to at least one of these games at the golden one center looking forward to seeing some good teams and hopefully some good basketball hopefully sabonis comes back very soon and we can get that fox sabonis pairing together and i would love to see fox have a game like this with sabonis also having a good game uh because the Kings should be winning when that is happening but we'll have to wait and see if they're able to put that together against one of these good teams regardless of the result we will have a locked on kings podcast for you to enjoy after those games so i hope you'll join me for that join me tomorrow as well i can't wait until then my name is matt george you have been listening to locked on kings part of the locked on podcast network